Ah, for a minute I thought it was Norman Evans. Did you want something as if I couldn't guess? Oh, no, no, here's that pack of tea I owe you. Well, thank you very much. Are you sure you're feeling quite all right? Certainly, why? Oh, nothing. Hey, yeah, I was you going to suggest that they pay me debt? I wasn't going to suggest anything. I was just going to come right out and say it, but I didn't. Oh, well, that's all right. Well, as a matter of fact, I'm very yeah. thankful the amount of tea you get, we get through nowadays. You wouldn't believe it. it's my son-in-law, mostly. I didn't think Americans drank tea. Oh, Jeff's a proper little tea-driven dynamo. He sits there all night and all day, pounding his typewriter with one hand and bashing our teapot with the other. Oh, so that's the noise we hear through the wall every night, is it? The typewriter. What did you think it was? The Death Watch Beetle? <laughs> we don't mind. <laughs> That was so used to it now, I don't think we could sleep without it. <laughs> What's he working on then, a novel? Oh no, he writes regular for a magazine. No, which one? I ain't never seen his name. Oh no, you wouldn't. He doesn't write under his own name. He uses a non B, whatever they call it. And you wouldn't know the magazine either. It caters exclusive for a specialist section of the community. Sorry. <laughs> Joycey, more tea. I was just a coming partner. Oh, look, honey, I have to be tax marshal. Isn't that enough for one family? <laughs> Touchy. Oh, is this the current issue? Yeah. That ghastly shirt. And why must they always draw you with shoulders five feet apart? They probably go with the shirt. And who says it's supposed to be me? Don't be silly, of course it's you. Tax marshal writes another blazing chapter of these true life adventures. If these are your true life adventures, you must be about 168. All right, all right. Was it my idea of them and their personal story angle? I don't know how they expect the kids to lap it up week after week. They must think the kids are a lot of kids or something. <laughs> don't you worry, they love it. Now, then, finish your tea and on with next week's blazing episodes. Blazing. Right now I could use a good fire lighter or a couple of ideas to rub together. How about the confessions of Tex Marshall? Tell him your real name is Jeff Rogers, and you've never been any further west than Pittsburgh. Look, Joyce, not so loud. These kids get everywhere. <laughs> Don't worry. Keep plugging. It's only my fun. Fun. Hello, are you still riding the range? Yeah. <laughs> you look as if you had your typewriter shot from under you. I suppose you haven't seen your father-in-law lately, have you? No. He's sloped off somewhere. How that man knows when I'm looking for him beats me. I swear he's fitted with radar. <laughs> What is the matter with you? I've just been captured by Indians. Oh, that's nice. I suppose your father-in-law wasn't with you, was he? <laughs> His car should have dropped a fire water. There isn't another white man for 50 miles. I'm surrounded by redskins. I'm in a tough spot. Now, the problem is, how do I get out? Shoot your way out. I'm unarmed. Well, fight your way out. I'm tied to a totem pole. Well, Paul, vault your way out. <laughs> I'm tied tight to the pole. I can't move. Where's your marble, old thunderbolt? Well, he's tied to another totem pole. Oh, you do get yourself into some right hand you do some... Them. I know. Chew through your ropes. I did that last week. Oh, do get out of it, for heaven's sake. You've got me worried now. No, no. I shall want that table in a minute. You know, we never had this trouble with Zane Gray. Is that you, Elf? <laughs> oh, it's you, Eddie. When did you last see your father? Why, who wants him now? Round it? <laughs> I want him, and Eddie, please don't be more stupid than you. What are you getting yourself all pushed up for anyway? Oh, Mum, you don't want to say you've forgotten. My interview for the new job. Yeah, and this time I'm going to make the right impression. Some people think I'm a mum. I'll show them. I'll walk into old Gilroy's office and let him have the Eddie Larkin's personality. Right between the eyes. Show him I've got the lock, keen business brain, confidence, foresight. You've got that all right. The interview's not till tomorrow. Yeah, well, first of all, I'll start off with... Oh, well, um, don't want to leave everything to the last moment, do I? Eddie, are you quite sure you want to be a brain worker? Well, of course, Mum. Don't you want me to see me land myself a good post? We'll have to see if Jeff can find you a spare totem pole. <laughs> My lady... Hello. Hello. Home is the wanderer. Where have you been? Out. Yes, I gathered that. Where to and what on? What on? Well, I suppose you might call it on business. Yes, I suppose I could call it that. That's what the publicans call it. <laughs> I have not been drinking. Do they make it in tablet form now? Ada, I swear to you. Eddie, leave the room. Ada, I assure you, with tears of sincerity in my eyes. Oh, Alf, do give over, for heaven's sake. If you shed tears, they'd have froth on them. <laughs> Gratitude. Gratitude, isn't it? Marvellous. That's all the thanks I get for fixing Eddie's future. 
fixing my future? Naturally, I'm not so blind to my paternal duties as some people might think. I've practically got you a job. Well, now I've heard everything. A job? But, Dad, I don't want to be a potman. <laughs> a potman? <laughs> now, what makes you think you could be a potman? That takes talent, mate. You've got to be born with the gift. You've got a dear job. Yes, I've got a dear job. <laughs> a job in keeping with your natural high-grade intelligence. You daft, soppy-looking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to trample all over your paternal duties, as they call them, but may I remind you that Eddie has already got a job? Oh, well, practically. Yeah, I've got an interview with Gilroy's tomorrow. But that's what I'm trying to tell you. It's the same job I've just done for Mr Gilroy. And I don't think you'll have to go to that interview after all. What do you want to go and put your great big fat foot in it for? I did not put my foot in it at all. In fact, going to see Mr Gilroy was the best thing I could have done. He told me so himself. He likes to meet his employees' parents. He likes to know a bit about their social background. So, of course, after he'd met me, I mean, well, <laughs> that was it. I suppose I could be a potman. Eddie, don't be so rude to your kind, thoughtful, interfering father. <laughs> I'm sorry to admit it, but I'm afraid you've done something right for once. I uh, just, eh? But you should have let me know you were going and I could have gone instead. You? Yes, well, you must admit I would have handled the whole thing much more tactful. More t <laughs> All right, Ada, love. You tell me how you would have handled it. Well, you men haven't got no finesse. I would have, I would have thought more about the social side of it. You would. I would. I would have let them see that Eddie really has got a good background. You would. I would. I, I would have asked them to tea. You would. I would. I did. What? <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Gilroy will join Mr. and Mrs. Larkins for tea at four o'clock this afternoon. Why, you stupid lump, you. What do you want to go and do a silly thing like that for? Hey, do you said yourself yeah, one no, moment no, ago. No, not this afternoon. Hey. We've got nothing in. The place isn't done. Oh, I could think some thoughts about you if I tried. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, girl. I didn't think. You I mean, didn't think. Well, I'll telephone and put it off. I mean, it's all right. I mean, mucking them about like this will put Eddie's chances right down the drain. Now, if they're coming, they're coming. Eddie! I'll get this place ship shape if it kills me. And you'll do it, mate. And no ship ever had a finer captain. I don't think you're going to slow fall. It's going to be all hands on deck this time. Here. Eddie, go and tell Joyce I wish she wanted to do some shopping. And I shall want the chairs out of the spare room. And I shall want that paper up in the cellar. And you better tell Jeff to... No, no, leave Jeff. He's tied up. <laughs> Eddie, move yourself! <laughs> oh, no! Oh, what till I get my hands on that publicity hound, Maxie Green? I'll get it. Hiya, Jeff. Well, Maxie Green. Tell me, were your ears burning just now? No. Well, they should have dropped off. Of all the stupid, idiotic, thoughtless publicity. What are you talking about? Oh, you mean the meat tax competition? Yes. Fine idea, that. Though I do say it myself. Well, come in, don't stand there waving the door about. Why wasn't I told about this before? I've only just seen it. Competition's been running for weeks, so don't you read the bullets. I write it. Show me in my contract where it says I have to read it. Well, I presume you've read it now. Yeah. Result of the meat text competition. The four lucky readers named below will spend an afternoon at the home of Tex Marshall with a thrilling Tex himself. Oh, no, Maxie. No, no, no. My contract... Your contract, Wacker, says you'll give your full cooperation, to any form of publicity, right? Maxie, I will not entertain a bunch of kids. Four kids, Jeff. Four little innocent subscribers. Anyway, don't let's waste time arguing the toss. They'll be here any minute. Any minute? You mean today, not today. Well, of course, today. It's all fixed. But, Maxie, I don't like kids. Well, shame on you. You're public, Jeff. They want to meet you. You're their hero. Hero? Tex Marshall's their hero. What happens when they come here and they, and they meet an ordinary idiot like me? They'll lynch me. Don't worry. I've thought of that. Oh, no, Maxie. Here, try this on for size. No, Maxie. Now, don't be so destructive all your life. Here, grab hold of this. No. And this. No. And they, oh boy, when the kids get a load of you in that outfit, they'll be convinced, all right? Here. And Guns, Maxie, no! listen, you don't have to shoot the kids. Now, get upstairs and put that club on. I'm going to pick the kids up, and I want to find Tex Marshall here when I get back. There must be an easier way of boosting circulation. Jeff, if you let me down over this, 
The bullet phones out of circulation, so I make myself plain. Sure. They drop the bullet, and I get the bullet. Exactly. Oh. He'll never pull this off on his own. We need somebody else. She's mine. Need... Hello? <coughs> Hello? I don't think I've had the pleasure. Well, don't worry, you will. You're just a tired. I'm Maxie Green. Here. Have a cigar. Oh, thank you. That's very kind of you. <laughs> Oh, get your gear off of here, will you? We've got a tea fight coming on this afternoon. So you, know. you knew about it, then? Well, of course I knew about it. I live here. Oh. How did you know about it? Well, I come down from the office to arrange it. From the office? Yeah. They don't take many chances, do they? What they sent you down here for? To check the rock cakes or something? Yeah, <laughs> the white. Don't just stand about. Get a move. Hello, who's this? Uh, oh, Ada, my dear, this is uh, Mr. Green from the office. Yeah, they do. The office. The office? Yes, the office and your tea better be up to stand it because Mr. Green here has been sent down special from the office to check it over. Well, I've heard of business efficiency, oh, but I'd very good of you to go to all this trouble, ma'am. Oh, well, it's no trouble. After all, my son's future's the most important thing, isn't it? Oh, so your ma. I've just rumbled. Oh, well, this tea party this afternoon, how many would there be? Just the two of them? No, four. Four? Well, two kids. No, so four kids. Well, that makes six. Well, if you count in the adults, yes, and if you two are joining us, that'll make eight. Eight? Then there's my daughter and her husband and there's Eddie. Yes, yeah, it's eleven. And you'll join us, of course, Mr. Green. Oh, thanks very much. Wasn't I in there already, like? Damn matter, mate. Hey, makes a round dozen. All right, Ada? Twelve? Well, if I'd known, I'd have the drill all. Oh, well, I'd better go and get some more food. Are they any particular fancy, Mr. Green? Oh, you know, usual stuff. Cream buns, chocolate eclairs, lashes of jam. You know how it is with four healthy kids. Yes, I know. It won't be the first time I've gone shopping with Anne Cart. Well, now, get a move on. There's this room to be done, and then you can lay the table and get the kitchen. Yes, all right. And just see that everything is to Mr. Green's satisfaction. Uh, you ought to get off to the shops, yes, oughtn't you, mate? Otherwise, they'll be closed, won't they, mate? Isn't it marvellous, isn't it? Well, that's all settled very nice. Now, uh, I'll be off to pick up the honoured guest. Yeah, it's all mate. Oh, yeah. By the way... Yes? You know, you could do me a very big favour. Yeah, certainly, anything at all. Well, it's not much, really, but you know what kids are. Oh, I do. Yeah. Tell me, have you ever done any acting? <laughs> Well, it's that we need enough for an army. Yes, but not for the Navy and Air Force and all. Oh, well, I expect the kids will shift them. Kids? Didn't you know your Mr. Gilroy's got four kids? And I do think your father might have used a bit of discretion. Well, if anybody should have used discretion... I mean, when he was chucking his invitations about. Oh, well, I suppose it's all in a good cause. Here, get these spread out. There's cream buns, chocolate eclairs, ginger pop, blum. We're going to need none of you to start the tea shop. Oh, that's them now. I'm going to get these into the other room as quick as she can. I'll go. Well, here we are. Right, kids, come on in. This is Agnes. Hello. James, Hello. Guthrie, and a brighter bunch of... Guthrie, wake up. We're here. Well, a nice little lot you are. I'm pleased to see you. Where's the rest of the party? Following on? Oh, they're right behind. Eustace, come on, move yourself. Well, you are a nice little family and no mistake. I bet your mother's very... <laughs> uh, come right in. This way. Right. Now, you kids behave yourselves. I'll go and see if the great Tex is ready yet. Never mind about the great Tex, Marshal. Where's the grub? I'll have his code book endorsed. <laughs> Very convincing, very nice indeed. Well, I'm glad you're ready. Your public await. Yeah, Maxie, well, I've had second thoughts. I can't go through with now, it. Now, don't talk. Dad, of course you can. But, Maxie, what do I do? Well, talk to a bunch of kids. Is that asking too much? Well, what do I say? Well, I don't know. You write the dialogue. Why can I come on? Let's have them glasses. Oh, now my glasses. Maxie, please, I need them. Now, don't talk, Dad. You don't see cowboys with glasses. Well, I don't see them any other way. Maxie, please let me have my glasses back. I can't see a thing without them. Oh, don't worry. As long as the kids can see you, it doesn't matter. Honestly, Jeff, all this fuss about dressing up as a cowboy. What about your father? What about him? Hey, Pop, come in here. <laughs> well, I mean, him and all. 
Yeah, you sure you know what you're doing? Well, of course, him and all. Well, what do you think of your dad as an Indian, eh? Pop, an Indian? I don't believe it. Blimey. You've got to believe it. Work up a little enthusiasm. Now, come on, we're going down to meet our guest. <coughs> Here. Surely you're not afraid of meeting a few kids, are you? I'm afraid of meeting Ada. <laughs> you, you sure she knows about this? Well, of course she does. Think what? it's a wonderful idea. What am I supposed to say to him? Well, uh, Oog? Oog? Yeah, you can bung in the odd owl once in a while. You know, it all helps. Maxie, please, can I have my glasses back? No, we're going down. Too late, they've come up. Now, naughty, naughty, I thought I told you kids to wait. Well, never mind. This is a big moment, partners. I want you to meet Tex Marshall. Courage, mate. Well, howdy, partner. Oh, very nice. <laughs> Got a mighty fine grip there, fella. I'm a girl. Huh? Well, you could have fooled me. What's this? Oh, yes, I didn't tell you. We've got a big surprise for you, eh, kids? This is uh, Chief, Chief Screaming Eagle. He's come over especially to meet you, too. Well, what do you think of him, Chief? Oog. I say, are you really an Indian? Yes, I mean, how? Then why are you got a white face? I've been ill. <laughs> You're a funny. You don't talk like an Indian. Tell me, have you ever met a, an Indian before? No. Then belt up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's an old Indian type of humour. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Chief. We'll have a little powwow later. Gump. Now, kids, you can see that the great Tex here is just raring to go. So come on, Tex, and lead the way to that stupendous spread. All right, all right. Come on, partners, just follow me this way. <laughs> <laughs> Thought I heard a rustler. <laughs> guess I made a mistake. I guess we made a mistake too, leaving them other two in that room with the grub. Come on. <laughs> oh. Good afternoon. My name, Our name is Gilroy. Pleased to meet you. Do come in. So nice of you to come. Uh, nice of you. Nice of you to invite us. You're Mrs. Larkins, of course. Of course. You mustn't think of our visit here in the nature of an uh, inspection, you it know. It is, of course, but you mustn't think of it that way. Of course, we do like to know the background of our employees, but I'm sure... You're sure you won't find nothing wrong with Eddie's background, Sir Marshall. This way, please. Your children have been here for ever such a long time. Our, our children. children? And a nice little family they are, too, especially the little coloured one. Coloured one? Of <laughs> course, that made me think a bit at first, but then I fell in. Of course, you must have adored adopted in this way. Come in. My dear, I assure you. Now, uh, this is my daughter Joyce, Eddie, you know, and my word, look at your two youngsters tucking in. Oi, pause for breath, your mum and dad's here. Mrs. Larkins, is this supposed to be a joke? A joke? Oh, I see what you mean. The other two, now they're upstairs. Other two? Upstairs? Well, they were upstairs. Come on, up she yes. easy. Oh. All right, Nancy, that does it. No, Give yeah. me my glasses. Jeff! I, I mean, Tex, please. Tex Marshall wears glasses. What's it to you, Four Eyes? I'm frankly skeptical. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm Tex Marshall, so what? He calls him Jeff, didn't you hear? Tex Marshall. This old setup, screwy. He's as phony as this imitation Indian. You'll get my chop around your bonce in a minute. <laughs> Come on. At least the food's genuine, I think. It'll better be. Now, now look at you, Don. If this gets out, we're finished. So? So? So, if you want to save both our jobs, you better get in there fast and put things right. Maxie, I'm getting so as I don't care anymore. Your job's now just a minute. I suppose all this lot was supposed to be for Eddie. Oh, huh? shut your big cake, all, will you? You <laughs> bit players are all the same. Jeff, tax partner for me. No. All right, then, not for me. For the wife. The little ones. You're not even married. I could meet somebody. No. <laughs> Jeff. No. Oh, pal. Please. Oh, well. Atta boy. Now listen, this is what you have to do. Once and for all, these are not my children. Listen, is this or is this not your mother? Certainly not. My mum wears real mink. Oh. Well, if they're not yours, I don't know whose they are. You must know something about them. Well, that's your tea, I know that. Oh, this is impossible. Come along, George. Let's no, no, go. no, please don't go. You you haven't seen all of it in fact. We've it. seen quite enough, thank no, no, you. No, no, please. There, there's Jeff. My son in law. Oh, he's a wonderful person. He's quiet, dignified, intellectual. Any fun, Jeff. Get Quick. On. Okay, everybody, oh, 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 oh,
hands of stick up. What else is this? Just why a dignified intellectual... There's a reason for this. There's got to be a reason. He writes you know, he likes it. He likes to project himself. Have you gone now? Out of my way, Ma. <laughs> I got some unfinished business with some pards of mine. Now, look at here. Plenty of fellas have crossed trails with Tex Marshall, but only once a piece. God, but you never fired a gun in your life. Is that so? Why, I wiped out the whole Kelly gang by simply going... <laughs> Now listen, folks. That's him. Got... That's the man who's responsible for your children. What? He told me he came from your office. I've never seen the man before in my life. I know now. I've met fathers like you before. Now look, I don't begrudge these kids that food, but get them out of here. No, oh, Mum. Please, please. That does it. I'm not staying in this phony dump another second. Come on, kids. There's no more grub left anyway. Oh, kids, please. Our partners. A play here. Look. Here, there's a Roy Rogers film on at the Pally. Oh, 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 I think I'm going to see It's lack of food. You'll have your tea. Don't drink with any of that trifle. Oh, yeah. Joyce, pour oh, some tea. Oh, Eddie, move yourself. Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! I tell you, this is like wearing a feather boast around your sweeter. She's been drinking. Out Ada, there's some, something wrong? <laughs> look, look, Ada, uh, it's a little thing for the kids. It was Maxie's... A little thing for the kids. Well, get out of here. I know you were behind it all. Out What you say, down? Mum! Dad! 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 Well, sir, do I get the job? <laughs> do you? Come along, Bubbles. It's all over now. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Eddie, look, I, I just found out who they were. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right, Jeff. I didn't know you were going to hold a rodeo. Still, what's a job? Yeah. What's a job? Ah <laughs> Young man, do you realize you brought my wife to the verge of a nervous breakdown? You did that. You did that in six minutes dead. And she has the constitution of an ox. Gilroy's need men like you, if it's not you and people like your family, Gilroy's will be out of business. Uh, what is your business? Have you never heard of Gilroy's double strength nerve tonic? You will, my boy, you will, because from next Monday, your brother-in-law will be selling it. And I am confident that with every bottle he sells, you create the need for three more. <laughs> oh, and another thing, you're a writer, I believe. Yeah? I need a new advertising manager, someone with foresight and drive, someone who can shock the public into believing, that I mean realizing, that it needs Gilroy's double-strength nerve tonic. You mean? Call in on Monday and we'll discuss it. And now, back to Mrs. Gilroy. Oh, uh, will she be all right? All right? My dear fellow, we keep a crate of double strength in the boot till Monday then. Would you believe it? Ah, it's a joke. We were listening. Well, it all has turned out very satisfactory. But if you'd have told me you were starting a Wild West fan club, I could have helped. Mama, look, I'm, I'm sorry, but it all turned out all right. Eddie's working, and as for me, no more six guns, no more westerns, no more getting tied to totem poles. Oh, oh my, that reminds me. I suppose we ought to do something about that. <laughs> oh, well, I suppose there's no hurry. Let's have a nice cup of tea, shall we? 